Well, good morning, everyone, um, and a very warm welcome to our webinar today, which is all about how to improve your SolarWinds platform by going beyond out-of-the-box reports. So just moving on to uh, some quick introductions before we uh, move on to the agenda for today's session. So my name is Darian. You'll see my picture up here on screen. I'm an account manager here at Prosperon Networks. Uh, I've been working now at Prosperon for about five years, and I'm joined today by our technical director, Mark Roberts. Hi, Mark. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. So that's just a, a quick introduction for you all. Uh, and now if we move on to the agenda for today's webinar. Today's webinar is SolarWinds best practices, out of the box versus custom SolarWinds reports. So the purpose for today's webinar is to really help you understand what you need from reports um, and how the default reports can be customized to achieve this. So first will be a quick introduction of Prosperum, who we are, what we do, and how we help customers like yourselves on their SolarWinds journey. I won't take too much of your time with this, going to aim for about two minutes. Um, next, we're going to be quickly looking at the importance of reporting, followed by looking at how out-of-the-box reports can be improved. And then after that, Mark will be taking you through uh, live demonstrations, where he'll be showing you some really interesting, real-world custom uh, reporting examples. And then, of course, there's going to be a Q&A section at the end. So just before we move on, a few housekeeping uh, rules to keep note of. There's going to be a few polls, um, so we would really encourage you to take part. It really helps us to align the content that we provide in line with what you know, you're looking for and what you're working on at the moment. On the right-hand side of your screen, there's going to be an opportunity for you to actually ask questions in real time. Um, so feel free, again, to um, ask as we go along. A mix of these will be answered as we go through, and others will be responded to either in line or we will cover the rest of them at the end. And lastly, sure. there will be a... Sorry, Mark. I was going to say, just on, on that, Darren, uh, so these webinars are very much around um, customers that have installations of, of the SolarWinds Orion suite and um, what they start with, yeah, those out of the box, and where they want to get to. So please ask questions. Uh, I would really like to be able to help people during this webinar. So if you have genuine issues, questions that relate to this, then please go ahead and ask. Sorry, I just wanted to get that out there. because no, absolutely. Uh, we love, like we love said, questions. We love that interaction. Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, like I say, there will be questions we'll answer as we go along. So if there's something that Mark's talking about that you have, you know, a, a question for that's relating to that, feel free, pop it in the chat, um, and we, you know, we'll try and cover that as we go through. Uh, and if there's any that we haven't got time for, you know, we'll we'll get onto those ones at the end and um, cover those too. And lastly, just to make a note, there is going to be a recording of this webinar which will be available after today's session, um, and that will be posted to our YouTube channel. So just moving on now to um, who are Prosperon Networks. Um, so Prosperon at a glance, um, Prosperon have been an authorized partner of SolarWinds for 16 years. We, although SolarWinds is our bread and butter, we also work with um, a number of other vendors and we are the first UK partner for NetBrain. Our professional services team have delivered over 1,500 um, days of SolarWinds professional services uh, per year. Uh, and last year we delivered or we assisted with over 1,000 support cases which were resolved by our support team internally here. We are the fastest growing uh, partner in EMEA of um, SCP engineers, that's SolarWind certified engineers. And a number of our engineers are also security cleared, which allows them to work on secure and uh, sensitive environments. Over the years, we've been awarded multiple SolarWinds accreditations, and we also have two FWAC MVPs under our team. So moving on to a, a quick overview um, of Prosperance Professional Services and kind of what that encompasses. Um, so we we assist customers with deployments, whether that's deployment of a new SolarWinds environment or you're uh, adding new modules to your existing environment. Uh, we assist with customers with customization. Now, this is probably where our engineers spend the bulk of their time helping with customizations, whether that's for reporting or alerting. We also have uh, dedicated integration engineers who can assist you with making SolarWinds work and integrating it with the other tools and the other products that you have in-house. We've recently introduced a managed services offering, uh, which we've been doing for about a year or so now. And we offer a, a range of different training from bespoke through to knowledge share and um, classroom style administration training. And then we also offer to our customers who renew their maintenance with us. Um, they're entitled to support with our in-house support team and also entitled to a annual free health check or platform review. So moving on, we should have a poll, first poll coming up. Yep. So um, fingers up. Ah, there we go. So what are your biggest pain points with SolarWinds reports? That should be coming up on your screen in just a moment, uh, if it's not already. 
if you wouldn't mind, you know, just taking a couple of minutes to um, kind of fill that in, that really helps us. Um, and then we'll kind of circle around to see, you know, what everyone thought. Yeah, so th this is one of our kind of standard start off poll questions when we do um, this kind of series of webinars. Uh, this taking the, the out of the box capability and then making it fit um, your purposes, your needs. So we've got a few things coming in. Um, OK, interesting. We've got um, issues with okay. um, accuracy of data. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is going to be a huge one. Uh, whenever you're yep. doing any reporting, you need to make sure that the data that sits underneath that report is accurate, because uh, without Absolutely. that, it's that the report is just a waste and of time. Also, seeing it, Mark, there's quite a lot of people who are going with the identifying what to report on, which I guess is quite yep. key because, I mean, to even have the accuracy of the data, you need to first understand what you should be reporting on, right? Yeah, I, and and this is something we spend a lot of time talking to our customers with, mm. um, and, and particularly for for me. Um, from a, a reporting point of view, it's one of those areas we see customers really don't take advantage of, of what it's able to provide. And if you think about what SolarWinds Orion is, it's big data collector. It goes out and leverages a whole bunch of protocols to retrieve information from the environment, stores it in a database. So that central location with all that data, it's just a huge um, mine um, uh, to, to go in there and get information out, get understanding, get decisions and, and help with decisions. So, um, yeah, we really, uh, really can see that one being a common scenario. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I say, I see that with working with my customers too, typically tends to be when we're talking about reporting, one of the, I guess, the big, big pain points there, big drivers. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So if we can close that poll now. Thank you. So um, I'm going to take over from this point, if that's okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. So uh, what we just kind of wanted to start off on here is just that kind of understanding about why you should be doing reporting, the importance of it. And as I've just indicated, it is a critical um, benefit. Uh, there are a number of driving forces behind it. Uh, you can see on the screen at the moment, we've kind of kept it quite simple. There are others, um, but certainly with um, a reporting framework, it's understanding the bigger picture. Um, we'll have a look at some of the reports later in the demo, but um, visibility is the biggest thing. Bringing information um, across a spectrum of, of, of data, of metrics, so you can make sense of it. Um, very much that kind of wood for the tree situation. Yep. Uh, reporting is that high level view. It's taking a wider, expansive um, uh, insight into the data so you can learn, you can understand, and you can make decisions and you can take actions efficiently and quickly. Um, you can deal with a whole bunch of scenarios with regards to compliance. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But certainly visibility, yeah, bringing that knowledge to the fore. And that's going to encompass and move into things like trend analysis. If you're looking at a window that's maybe 24 hours wide um, compared to a year, well, you're going to see a whole different framework of knowledge. Um, that trend analysis, um, maybe you're in a seasonal um, organization where uh, maybe there's e-commerce or that there are big events that take place through the year and you're business systems and your services that um, the IT department deliver to the organization are going to be used in different ways, whether it's a, a functional purpose, whether it's a trend of higher utilization. That's important. That's important to make those um, future decisions and also, as I say, being able to, to, to move forward in an intelligent manner. And that kind of leads into remediation. Now, remediation um, is going to be something where one of the things I talk about most is um, if I have an issue with a, a service and I look at the, the very focal point, an alert and a report um, are going to be get, doing different things. An alert is going to tell me something's broken. Somebody goes off and fixes it. Uh, but if my report tells me that that's happened 20 times in a month, now I'm going to be in a position where this is really wasteful. This is inefficient. I need to now look at this, investigate it in further detail and get the resources in place to do a full fix rather than this sticky plaster. When it happens, somebody goes and does something. And then the last one that we have here um, on this section is that kind of integration. Um, so um, we can use the reporting engine Orion. We can also um, uh, access the data from third-party systems. So whether you're using something like Grafana, um, Power BI, 
um, uh, there are many out there that are going to be able to, to bring that into play. So you may have a centralized reporting platform that rather than using Orion, it would be more appropriate for you to take that into uh, your third party reporting solution. Mm -hmm. Mark, I know that when we um, when we review the Orion Health checks that we do for our customers, um, yeah. you know, many of them are not really utilizing reports much or if it, at all in Orion. Like, why do you think this is the case? Um, well, to be honest, the, the poll is a, is the biggest one there. Um, mm -hmm. It really does um, correlate to what what I see when I speak to to customers. They they're just not sure what they should be doing from a reporting point of view. Um, one of the questions that I do when I when I hold workshops with customers. Um, that is there to do a kind of big uh, uh, progression of the benefits of the platform. When it comes to reporting, and um, who in the business receives reports? What are those reports? And often it's a blank faces. It's a, yeah, we don't really. And you kind of start delving into why, and it's, well, uh, there is no internal framework. That's kind of the, what I've got on that first um, line there. There is no understanding that actually it's a good mechanism to report data up the channel, um, the management to see it, directors to see it, um, whoever the, the topology of the um, organization is. So it's really about um, kind of doing that review and understanding what the benefits are and then the focal point. So we're certainly going to touch on that uh, today. But as I, I think that poll very much reflects um, the conversations that certainly I have with customers. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Um, and other challenges um, that we have there, um, who, who's able to go and do that data mining? This is a kind of semi-specialist area. Um, anyone that has used the Orion reporting engine will know that the GUI is, makes it very simple. But there are still challenges in terms of how do you configure that to best effect. So hopefully we're going to get a lot of that across uh, today. So I want to get onto the demo very quickly. Um, but there are scenarios where it's more advanced. There may be a query-based data mining aspect to it. And so that's where a potential skill set um, can, uh, can be missing. Mm -hmm. And kind of looping back to what we've already said, what do we actually report on? What is the metrics? How do we understand how we collect and report and present this data? Mm -hmm. Accuracy of data, if we can't trust it, if we can't rely on it, then how do we fix that? So uh, most of this in terms of Orion is about, are we collecting the data in the first place? Have I got the measurements that allow me to do my reporting function? Because often we see that that doesn't exist. Or in fact, the reporting function is not aligned to the structure of those data metrics. So they cannot be accurate because we're, we're looking at the wrong data set or we're formulating it in the wrong way. And then overall, it's this ownership. Yeah, who is organizing, who is managing the fact that there is a huge benefit to be gained from utilizing reporting. So what we have um, here is just some very quick things. I'm going to move on quickly because I really want to be able to do this in the in the live demo. But I wanted to put on this screen just the kind of bullet points around this. Custom properties. Anybody that's ever worked with me and spoken to me on their installation will know that the first thing I always say about getting things done right is the use of custom properties. They are the foundation of so much in Orion. Please refer to other webinars on this subject and say it's a really important subject matter. And utilizing custom reports in uh, custom properties, sorry, in our reports is going to help in many different ways. It's going to allow us to get more information. So you can see here in uh, highlighted in yellow, we're extending and enhancing the report by providing additional information. If I know that I've got certain things being displayed here, then I'm going to um, act differently. We can also use it for structure. So maybe we want to put groupings behind it. Um, so in this example, maybe I want all of my priority one devices to be shown first and then sectionalize the priority two and then sectionalize priority three, because that allows me to be efficient with my interaction with the report. And then the big one, the big, big one here is filtering. Yeah. Um, an aspect that we always see out of the box is too much information. And we're going to see that in the demo. How can we reduce that? How can we make it um, pertinent and relevant for the, the function we need from that reporting capability? Um, some other key things here. Um, 
we're going to be in the scenario where sometimes we need to go for a custom query. Now, this is going to allow us uh, to expose the use of the Swickle, the custom SolarWinds language for SQL analysis, and also support for full SQL. So sometimes, as I say, because the database is just so big in terms of its volume, in terms of its schema, that going custom query is the best way of achieving a reporting goal. Refer to this again, using filtering, making the reporting accurate. Um, my first examples are gonna be demonstrating this very much. And then it's the kind of nice things, it's make it visual, uh, bring your company logo into play. Um, if you're sharing this to customers, then you wanna, you wanna stamp it with your, your company and corporate banner and, and logo. Uh, we wanna make sure it, it uh, is structured efficiently to retrieve information out. So formatting is really a good um, area to be making sure you work on nicely. So I've also got here some examples of what the primary drivers for reporting. So certainly the number one here is SLA reporting. SLA reporting, SLT reporting as well is very much in here. So that service level, are you as an organization, an IT department delivering what you need and what the business demands you deliver to that organization? Are your systems up? Have you got connectivity? How is the utilization? Are you being proactive in how you deal with things? Well, moving into a proactive, a proactive rather than reactive situation, reporting is an essential ingredient. You cannot be proactive if you're not utilizing reporting. I typically find, Mark, that when I'm working with my customers and we are discussing reporting or, you know, that's a topic that's kind of on their agenda at the time, SLA reporting typically is the highest priority and what I tend to yeah. talk to them the most about. That's, yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well in the day to day. Yeah, absolutely. As I say, it's, it's the foundation of, of reporting. Um, companies spend a huge amount of money on their IT and they need to make sure that it's working and that it's delivering to the business and it's doing so in a performant way. And when they need to change it, have they got the data to be able to um, uh, understand the best way of changing it? And certainly if you're providing any um, kind of third party um, sort of service, then quality of that service is a, is a paramount. You're going to lose customers if that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Also, compliance. Yeah, we're working in a framework of heavy compliance these days, absolutely, whether it's from a security point of view, whether it's from standards. And so evidence, yeah, how can we provide evidence? Um, I'm sure that if there are people on the call that have had to deliver um, reporting from a compliance point of view, they could spend a huge amount of time on it. And so putting a framework um, of reporting in place and automating that so it saves it to a folder. And whenever an auditor comes along, you just say, here you go, here's, here's all the reports you need. That's, that's obviously a, a fantastic target to aim for. Also from this, um, identifying non-compliance. So whether this from a, a reporting, because maybe your weekly re report that you get through, there then is the job list for the next week to go and deal with any non-compliance. Uh, again, this is gonna help with not just kind of auditing function, but also continual business improvement and, and maintaining those standards. Operational analysis. So we're very much gonna see the difference between what management will see, what they need to observe out of their environment, and then uh, what uh, the kind of engineering level who, who are going off and, and doing the work and making sure that everything is, is functional and supporting it so it performs well and dealing with issues when it's not. So they have very different requirements for reporting. And again, when we come to the, to the demo area, I'm going to be highlighting some quick wins with taking an out-of-the-box report and then converting that into something which is more appropriate for um, this target audience. And the last one here in terms of these kind of personas is the forecasting. So typically architects, but clearly in an environment where there is no defined architect, there's, uh, there's people kind of making future decisions, then using current data. If I know how my utilization works today and has been for the last six months, I can now use that as a framework to then understand how does this impact potential change? Here is the evidence that I need to upgrade my server 
uh, here's the evidence that uh, the amount of bandwidth is going through the firewall now means that I need to replace it with a more capable, more powerful unit. Um, that if I'm moving to the cloud, perhaps, that I have an understanding about potential cost exposure. Here's this compute load. What would happen if I then translated that into running this in Azure or AWS, Google Cloud, et cetera? If you've got some understanding, because I've spoken to many customers that when they move to the cloud, it's like, oh, my God, how expensive is this? Have we done the right thing? Take it from a foundation of understanding. Yeah. So from a, a tips point of view, just to kind of collate um, some ideas and some suggestions here. So um, get your internal standards going. Understand who is going to be in control, who needs to see the reports, what their needs are, is essential. Having that review internally is then going to start opening those uh, avenues of what reporting you create, who's going to see it, how do they need to receive it, how do they need to see that data, and then that will then drill into um, how you then go ahead and create them. And when you're doing that, take the foundation. Yeah, There's no point to go and create new report and then build it from scratch when there's already something there that's very close to what you want to do. And you can just take that as a foundation and, and, and build off it, improve it, and make it fit for purpose. Custom properties, again, I'm sure I don't need to um, uh, strengthen my, my position on this any further. Um, utilize them. If you have not got a custom property that makes it a, a report structure work better, um, allows you to filter efficiently, go and create it. Utilize that. If you need to use that custom property in reports, you're probably going to need to use that and improve it in your dashboarding and in your alerting areas and your access control settings as well. So this is, again, a, a good point to review your custom property definitions. And also then look to schedule these. Yeah, We want to be in a, an efficient scenario. We want to be hands off. We don't want manual um, workloads to be added to your roster already. I'm sure you're already busy enough. So utilize the uh, capability of sending emails with alerts attached or indeed saving to file systems. So those um, compliance reports, save them to a file system automatically. Keep hands off, let it do its thing itself. Also that save to file system may allow you to automatically integrate to your intranet, whether it's SharePoint or anything else um, for automatic population. Okay, so I'm keen to get onto the demo. So let me just change here. I think there was another poll mark that was supposed to come up just before. No, 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 no. I think we'll come back to that after the okay. demo. Okay. Okay. So, um, first of all, I've gone to the reports area. And in here, you can see um, in our installation, because obviously, in terms of what we do, we use um, uh, this as a demo platform. We use this to, to test our um, uh, advanced reporting, et cetera. So we've got a lot more reports in here. Um, and also we have all of the modules installed. So depending on the modules that you own, you're going to be in a position where more reports are going to be installed to this framework um, to you to utilize. So this drop down allows you to see that um, we've got breakdowns on the products. We've got, um, if you've got any limitations, uh, but the most commonly one that, you, uh, that I use here is this report category. And immediately you can see the really useful structure, whether it's um, availability based, whether it's um, the fact that you want to concentrate on your storage devices or um, your hardware health. So these categories give you structure. And uh, what we often do is when we create custom reports is make sure we put them in these existing structures. We identify ones where uh, we want to create new ones. And you can see up here, actually, in terms of our installation that we've got here, uh, we have a number of schedules. So we have a, a number of reports that we get through on a, uh, a weekly basis because this one here, for example, one of the really useful ones for an Orion administrator is let me know which devices have got custom properties that should be populated. Now, as an Orion administrator, I want to go in and fix that. So reporting gives me the ability to identify that very quickly. So um, what I'm going to do, first of all, is just show you an out-of-the-box report. Now, this is an SLA report. This is Node's availability 
last month. So a common report that you're going to utilize. And the issue that I have with this report is the depth of information that's here. First of all, who is the audience? Well, in this example, if I've got hundreds of devices, we've got customers with thousands of devices, this default report is going to be long. And from a, an operational standpoint, I don't want to see devices that were 100% in this period. That doesn't. I'm not going to action anything. I'm not going to take that data and do anything with it. What I am going to have to do is scroll around and ignore that. And so I want to make sure that I understand who the audience is. Now, this may be something that we send to our managers because the managers want, like to see these big numbers. They like to see that we've got things running at 100%. But actually, what is more appropriate? So this is where you want to potentially start thinking about exception reports. So this would be, for me, a more appropriate availability report for um, uh, an operational engineer. So this might be something where immediately the assumption here is, if I don't see the device on this list, it was 100%. And now I've got focused visibility where I can now concentrate on the devices that were not 100%. And we could also do this. So we've done things with customers where we've put in here um, how this fits into um, the nines system. So whether you're running to two nines, three nines, God forbid, five nines, um, how does this align to that? Have we breached that? So with an SLA report, yes, this is a good number to be including, but maybe the specific number that I want to see is by how much have we breached the SLA? How much time has been lost? Also, from an operational standpoint, when I look at this, my first thought is, well, why? Yeah. So I could look at this and I could go immediately, oh, that's fine, I, I've decommissioned that server. Um, this device uh, uh, is being replaced, so it's been taken offline, or that office has been closed because it's not needed, et cetera, et cetera. So I might have some understanding. So that's maybe where I add a custom property, add the custom property for comments or notes. So now I can see the context around why this is so low. Yeah, if somebody's added that information to Orion in that field, then display that in the report. It's useful information. The other thing that I can see here is my priority, what the device role is, where it is located, maybe who, uh, as you can see here, the operational owner. So now I've got an immediate enhancement to my report that says, OK, I need to go and speak to this chap because that server is important. Why have we, OK, obviously in terms of this number, maybe this was 92 um, percent. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a big breach of SLAs. I can now go off and do something more efficiently and more accurately because I've got visibility of that. And I'm also not having to wade through lots of other things. Kind of an extension of this as a data set is then um, maybe a report on, well, give me my devices and when they've been up and down during a period of time. So this is a report that we um, have in our library um, where over this period, I want to understand for all of my devices, when they've gone down, how long they've been out for. And I can therefore look at this and go, well, clearly this dev uh, SQL server has had lots of problems. Now, how do I move forward with that? Well, first of all, I've got the information. I've then possibly added my custom properties again. So this is one that says in our library. So our engineers will then install this at a customer installation and then immediately look to add to it. Put those additional custom properties. Create a different version for the different teams. So uh, again, when we're working with a customer that's got, say, 200 network devices and, uh, and 500 servers, they are different audiences. One of the questions we will ask is, do you have IT generalists? Yep. Do you have a, a pool of five engineers that work across all of those um, technologies? Or actually, no, you have a, a network team. So we're going to send this report or create this report and filter it to just network devices so that that's what they see. And the infrastructure team will see the objects that are related to them. Again, I'm now taking a report and tuning it for my audience, yeah, I'm filtering it so just network devices will populate, and I'm providing additional information. So this is an, uh, a report which is not included out the box, and there is a gap in that knowledge. 
So therefore we can take this and provide further information. Now, this one's even more important. We've looked at nodes, and again, customers of ours are gonna have hundreds, thousands, some of our customers are very large and have tens of thousands of devices. But when you start moving into monitoring interfaces, then immediately you can be into tens of thousands. And this report here, out of the box report, if I run this, now we've only got a small demo lab environment here, but um, you can see it's already reasonably long. Well, I've been on a customer that have um, generated this report, and when the page finally loads, there's 20, 30 plus thousand entries in here. Well, good luck if you're going to go through that. That's not going to happen. So then what is it you're trying to learn from this report? That is a fundamental of all reporting. What are you trying to learn from the data that you're presenting? So here, what I'd be looking at doing is editing this report. And again, understanding what I want to achieve. So um, on here, this is the kind of definition of the report. I said I could change my logo if I want. I could change my um, uh, entry here. Well, first of all, I don't want to edit this. What I want to do, and let's go up here. What I want to do is take this and duplicate it. <clears throat> and now, I'm going to put my prefix and I'm going to put my subtitle in here. So I'm only interested in critical interfaces and interfaces not 100% up. And so then I've got um, the report, it's already here. Yeah, if I was to run this, it would be exactly the same as I did before, except the fact that obviously I've changed the title. So now when I edit this, I can now very quickly come in and start tuning this. So from an interface point of view, you could see that availability is not equal to 100. And I'm going to add another condition here. And I want to use my custom properties because I've created a custom property that's defining how important this interface or these interfaces are. Now, we've gone for a Boolean yes, no. This could be priority. It could be one out of three, one out of five. Um, so in this example, we just keep it quite simple. Actually, you can see here, maybe I'm interested in only the interfaces that are delivering WAN service. Yep, that may be a criteria for inclusion. But let's use this one here. Critical interface, yes. OK, so now when I run this through, it's only going to populate with those devices and interfaces. And so I might want to edit this. And when I edit it, I might want to put on additional metrics. So again, it's just understanding what it is you want to achieve from this. Do I want to indicate whether this is a WAN interface? Do I want to um, come into my no data set and I want to put my node custom properties on here. Yeah. So um, what is this device? Where is it located? Yeah. So very quickly, very simply, I can put this in. I might want to group by. So here I might want to group by the site location. Yeah. It may be my customer, it may be my service function, whatever it may be. So now, when I preview this, yeah, we're very quickly in this position of, um, okay, so um, let me just submit that. I think I got that all right. Yeah, okay, so um, I just haven't got any critical interfaces, so let's just take that out. So taking that out of the box report, moving it forwards, I've now got, the filtering that I want. That report that we've just shown is now much cleaner. It's giving me the purpose for the report that I'm looking at. Okay, so I'm not going to save that. I'm just going to cancel that and close it. And 
go back there. Okay, so the next one that I wanted to show you was applications. Now, so anybody on the session, everybody watching this recording that has the SAM module, the server and application monitor module with Orion, um, one of the big considerations that you need to have from an SLA point of view is genuinely what is um, uh, relevant for an SLA. If you think about an application, actually, let's use this. Let's use um, IS here. So in the report, we can see that IS was only available for 67% of the time in this period. So I've just clicked on the detail link. I'm doing my analysis. Why is that the case? And what I'm going to do, come down the bottom and just change this chart. And we can see a trend. Yeah. So this is my trend analysis. This is my trending report. So here I can see it's consistently going down and it's consistently going down for a, a reasonable amount of time as well. Well, IS. IS, if you're not familiar, is a, a web server technology. And so at the top here, I can see that actually this web server has four websites configured on it. Actually, only one of them is active. And what I can also determine from this is possibly this is being used for testing. Yeah, I've got a duplicate running on a separate port. OK, that would be interesting. It'd be interesting to find out if somebody's using this same server to do testing of this application. And if they bring that down, then that's going to change the status of the application. <clears throat> it's this is the website that I'm interested in. And from a, a website point of view, a web application point of view, the SLA should not be on the fact that um, the request, um, a second rejected, went over a threshold, or that um, the um, help service stopped. If that stops, then the application goes into a stop state in Orion. That application or that service stopping may not mean that the service uh, the, the web application is not working. It just may mean that it's maybe not doing indexing or that um, some background middleware processing is not being performed. But actually, the web application is still running. Users can still interact with it and achieve everything they need. It just may have a, a, a little element around it. So from a reporting point of view, think about the service. Think about the application delivery. In this example, I would be looking to create a report for SharePoint specifically, and that that SharePoint report is telling me whether the web page is working. So the only monitor that I would be including in that report for, for this SLA is, is the website available? Can I log on to the SharePoint website? Do I get my page loading? The other things that sit underneath it may not affect the availability and therefore should not be affecting your SLA reporting output. It's a really, really important consideration in that example. So Mark, I can see that that makes sense for um, a web application, but um, yeah. how about for other, other applications? Because um, I saw a lot of application templates listed in the report. Yep. Um, um, yeah, so, I mean, let's extend that. So SharePoint, we know that SharePoint runs on SQL Server. So from a SQL Server point of view, and if anybody has applied the App Insight for SQL, um, to a uh, Microsoft SQL database, they'll be monitoring hundreds of metrics. And again, not every single one of those uh, metrics, if it goes down, is going to affect the health and performance of SQL Server. So again, you're going to get a, a, a misreported SLA in this example. So from that point of view, I'd be thinking, what is the user experience? This is what we call it, a user experience monitor or a, a real user monitor, a RUM. And so I'd be thinking, well, the, the clear one for a SQL Server is, can I perform a query? And does that query come back in a performant way, i.e. in under a second? That's my measurement. That's my SLA. Particularly actually relevant if you're running SQL Server under a cluster. Can I get to perform a query through the virtual IP, the listener IP address of that service? So very much think around as say how the application delivery is working, that user experience level function. Um, you may refer to it as the presentation layer of the application. That's the one that you should be thinking about from an SLA point of view. Okay, going to move on to one of my bugbears. 
So the out of the box CPU load report. Um, and this isn't a fault of SolarWinds in, in no way. This is the fact that um, this is not targeted. Again, I've got a mixture of network devices and applications and servers. Um, but when I look at this, I'm thinking, well, CPU on its own is not a singular metric which um, I should be thinking about. So what we've got here is our replacement for this. So immediately you can see on here we've got charts. Yeah, because look at my table. If I've got, what if I'm looking for an example here? Okay, yeah, so we've got a server here where on average it's nice and low. Actually, we've got one here even bigger. So the average CPU load is nice and low, but it's peaked 100%. Okay, I want to understand what that behavior looks like. So maybe I'm going to drill into this, look at the CPU chart and do some understanding, or actually I could just scroll to the top here and I can see that um, I've got vis visibility of that now. I can see if there's a trend in this chart. If I've got a line sat up here constantly and, and peaking or um, regular spikes and it lasts a good while and then goes down again, I've now got more information within my report to understand behaviors, utilization from that. And how do you so, decide um, what devices populate those charts? Um, so actually, well, these charts are very simply based on the fact of show the highest number. Yeah, so show the highest average CPU load value. So now I've got that context around that compute consumption. Um, and we've done the same on memory um, uh, on this. So uh, again, easily I can infer that this is a consistent level of utilization on this um, server here. Now, a machine running that hot, again, if I now understand what that is, if I've added, so again, this is one of our base um, reports. So when we install this for a customer, we're going to add to these tables. We're going to put those custom properties in there. We're going to filter this so it's just populated with network devices, with virtualization hosts, with storage devices, with servers. Um, the servers may be split between Linux and Windows because there is a, a Wintel team and there's a Unix team. They're all the considerations that we need to be thinking about from our reporting. Mm -hmm. And um, we can, I guess we can align these to the target audience, right? Because you mentioned earlier yeah. um, the importance of targeting um, the audience with the reports. It's, it's, it's critical. If, if you think about, so put yourself in the position of being the network manager. Yeah. If you receive this report and you can see here that probably 70% of the objects that populate this report are servers and virtual machines. And actually, we've got a printer down here. That's, that's not you're not going to look at that. You're going to care about that because you know it's just too noisy. You haven't got time to review it and pick out the bones from this and find out what's really the important thing from you. So make it accurate. When I send this report to a network uh, manager, I'm going to be editing or duplicating it, adding a filter using my custom property. Operational owner equals the network team. Now then when they see this, that's only going to get populated with their infrastructure. And so this is where, um, again, any customer that we've worked with will often see that they've got the same report repeated multiple times for those audiences. OK, a couple of last things just to show here um, before we um, uh, go to the questions. Um, I see we've been getting a few questions in. Please um, take this advantage of uh, today's session. Uh, put your questions out there. We, we would love to be able to help and answer them. And so uh, what we've got on the screen here is an audit report. So there is an out of the box audit report. But again, go and run it on your installation and you will see by default, it will include login and log out values. They are going to be 90 percent of the content of this report. Um, if you want to see login, log out events, again, duplicate the report. Filter the events to um, only show those um, maybe for certain um, user types or accounts so you get more visibility but what we wanted here is a report that allows us to see changes that take place in orion so we can see here that somebody's added a new user account that a view's been created or deleted or um, a new device has been added this is this is kind of audit this is com uh, compliance this is um, that going back and going 
oh, well, um, who's changed this view? Because this was built for the particular audience and now it really doesn't fit because somebody unwittingly or unknowingly has made a change um, to the detriment of those users. We've also got a view uh, here where we've taken it further uh, because I'm actually only interested in objects that have been deleted. So what was deleted, when it happened, and who did it? So when we look at these reports, so let's go and edit this and see how this comes together. You can see in our data source area that very simplistically, yeah, and this is where you need to spend some time just to understand what is available, how you can utilize, uh, utilize this, is we've created a filter just based on the message and it contains a certain keyword. And so here on this drop down, you can see that we've got some basic top tip. As soon as you come into this selector area, take it off of basic. Use this um, enhanced display. It gives you visibility of things you didn't even know uh, were available for filtering or for displaying out on the report. So I always, always change to advanced. Give yourself visibility of that so you can determine the benefit of adding um, more filters, uh, more content in the display. So again, at this point, I can see actually all the different action types that are available. So um, here you can see that maybe the action type is related to hardware health issues compared to something else. The last kind of report I wanted to, to show in the demo, and I see we've got some questions coming in, excellent, is um, a kind of things that are missing. Yep. So one of the things that's missing from reports, so we had um, a requirement internally, and we also had this driven by a, a number of customers where uh, when we kind of discussed, uh, so let me put some context around this, I'm not being very clear. So when we speak to a customer and we're doing a new installation or a replacement of another monitoring solution, one of the first things we ask for is an inventory. So what are we going to populate? What do you know you need to populate? And often we'll be get told, well, our inventory isn't particularly complete. We're not sure. OK, so what we'll do there is do some scanning. So one of the scanning here is, well, list out all of the virtual machines that run on your virtual platform, in this case, VMware. So we connect to vCenter. We're pulling down all the devices and servers that are um, uh, existing on that platform. And then this report is literally saying, tell me the ones that are on vCenter, but we're not actively monitoring an Orion. Yeah. So now uh, my Orion team, my Wintel team, my server team can look at this and go, oh, good Lord, that one should be. OK, I'm now going to add that to Orion. So in this example, I could click on this, go to my no details page, see that I'm just doing basic functionality from vCenter monitoring, and then very quickly and easily turn this into a full Orion monitored device. So thinking through the benefits, thinking through the gaps that exist in knowledge, in management capability, in how to make that more efficient. Fantastic. Darren, do we have any questions come through? That yeah, I'm, I'm just bring that's through? What I'm just looking at now. Um, so there's yeah, there is a few that come through. I guess um, on the reporting section that we've just gone through, Mark. So it might be uh, you might be able to help kind of answer a couple of these now. Um, yep. So I'm seeing one here, which um, to do with the management reports that we we showed kind of momentarily ago, um, and someone's asking, is it possible to create traffic light reports for management? So perhaps uh, management asks for a green, amber, red snapshot of the environment. Is this possible to do? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the question that I would kind of raise there is, um, is that actually something that we're going to generate from the reporting engine, i.e. this kind of display? Or, and let me go and have a look in here. Um, I'm just trying to think whether we've got something. Yeah, let me let me do this. So if we go to um, our dashboard display here, mm -hmm. and so I'm very much a, an advocate of actually the Orion web interface in itself is a reporting interface. Uh, what is a report? A report is a data um, presentation that allows a user to learn and understand. So I'm just going to put one of our modern dashboards in here. And so let's open that one up. 
Mm -hmm. So it may be something like this. Yeah. Uh, again, if I'm not quite on track, then um, please use the um, question to provide that feedback. But this may be your report. This may be the page that you send this user on a daily, weekly, monthly, whatever basis. So this is a current display, but you could very easily turn this into something more. So, for example, um, this one here, um, if we go into this display, so now we can see that we've got historic information coming through. We may have uh, dashboards with, with charts going through. So again, if I show you this one, you can see that we are providing data in different ways. It doesn't just have to be the reporting engine that's delivering it. It could be a page that you create in your um, dashboarding area of Orion. Hopefully that's answered that question. Thanks, Mark. Um, you okay to take another question? Keep going. Yeah, brilliant. Um, quite a few coming through at the moment, actually. So um, another one here on the reporting. If we have a report that is bespoke to business hours, um, so Monday, Sunday, 8, to 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, yeah. on interfaces in service, um, yeah. I've noticed that it causes our web server to become unresponsive. Is it possible that even with the conditions being acceptable, that the report overall is too bulky um, to cause the issue? Right. OK, so there's a couple of things to kind of highlight in there. One of the, the aspects around that is the user mentioned business hours. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Um, if you think about a chart, so I may not find a chart um, quickly, so I'll, I'll leave it for now. But um, where you've got um, your business is running from, say, eight o'clock in the morning to around 6.30 at night in terms of that time window where users and staff are using the resources. Um, time outside of that, kind of not irrelevant, but if the average utilization of a server during work hours is 40%, Outside of work hours, it's probably going to be about 12 to 15 percent. Yeah, rough numbers. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a report which is looking at the average, it's going to take that work period as well as the outside of business hours values and create a singular average number. So business hours reports are really important to get right. And mm -hmm. so putting the logic in your filter that says so this date time um, filters in the uh, reporting engine. So put in there greater than eight, less than 6.30 at night. That then is going to focus that on um, that reporting output. So just that average value is going to be applied and that peak value applied during those periods. Um, then we've got the second part of that with regards performance and the report may not load. Um, yes. Yeah, so in that example, again, we, we have that situation where this interface report if we haven't created a filter and the report is trying to load 30,000 interfaces on it, is your SQL Server powerful enough to deliver all of that data? Is your web browser able to display all of that data? Two things that are probably possibly not going to be the case. So think about how you can logically structure those. Yep. So use the filters, bring that focus. I don't want to show the ones that are 100%. Well, we saw that it got rid of 95% of the content just by doing that. If you do need all of that content, then again, review the database performance. It's typically the one that's going to be the bottleneck in terms of displaying that content. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Um, I've got time for a few more questions. Um, so another one here for you. Um, so can SolarWinds do a report for the nodes in maintenance mode during a timestamp? Um, yes. So I'm not quite sure. Can so I'm looking at the list now, actually. So can so do a report for the nodes in maintenance mode during a timestamp? Um, yes. Um, not 100% sure what the question here is. But just because a device is in maintenance mode doesn't mean to say you can't report on it. If it's in maintenance mode, Orion is not collecting any data. So I'm going to load here. So one of our uh, uh, reports here, if it's loaded in this platform, um, not seeing it, but we, we do have an out-of-the-box report that is looking for devices that are in maintenance mode so we can understand how long they've been in that 
um, mode four, because again, from a point of view of um, management, if somebody puts a device into maintenance mode and then don't put an end time to then automatically start it again, maybe somebody needs to manually come along and do that and they've forgotten and then you're not monitoring the devices you should. So absolutely, you can create a report on that. So at the moment on this platform, I don't think we've got that populated in here. Okay. Oh, Next thanks, question. Mark. Next question. Um, so another one here again with depreciated reports. Um, can we use the legacy report uh, migration tool yeah. to migrate them and make them fully usable again? Yeah. Okay. So the question here is: um, Can we use deprecated reports? So deprecated reports is using what was referred to as the report writer engine, and that is an application that used to exist or still kind of does exist on the server itself. So when Orion was a console app, not a web app, the reporting function was done in a separate console app. As SolarWinds have then migrated every the functionality to the website, um, now we have this web-based reporting engine. Um, when you upgrade, it will look at your report writer reports and convert them. You can run that utility. So there's a, um, a link, oh, sorry, there's a, a, an application that exists on your server that you can run that will do that conversion. So um, what I'll do is take this one separately offline and we'll follow up with that um, person and send that link um, mm -hmm. and the detail about how to run that migration again. But Perfect. it should yep. have done it automatically when you did your upgrades. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Um, another question here. Um, is there an easy way to find a value that you can easily see against a node, um, such as IPAM node, uh, and where this corresponds to data fields that you can add to a report? Okay. So I'm just rereading that. So is there an easy way to find a value that you can easily see against a node, IPAM node, and where this corresponds to the data field? So um, Again, I'm going to interpret this. Um, so if you have a device in Orion and you're monitoring it via SNMP or WMI, uh, other protocols, and that as an object is also in IPAM, can we kind of create a report across those two um, uh, modules? Absolutely. So again, um, uh, certainly when we speak to customers, it's don't try and bottleneck yourself onto um, does the data um, well, can we uh, put these two um, modules together? Absolutely. The, it's one big database. And so, um, for example, some of our reports uh, that we have is taking um, UDT data, yeah, the, that module. We're taking IPAM data, that module. We're taking NPM data. We're taking NCM data. And all of that is going into a single report. So without doubt, um, the ability to create reports across modules exists. Um, it's, again, the fundamentals of what do you need to see, how do you need to see it, and then putting that together. So when we work with customers on kind of more advanced reports, what I'll do is sit down with them and get just get a spreadsheet up and say to them, put your columns that you want to see. Put example data in the format that you would like to view that. Um, tell me how you would like to need to filter this. And then I can then take that and map that into building that as a report into Orion. Thanks, Mark. Um, have you got time for any more questions, or did you? Uh, um, I know we're at the, the top of the hour. Um, mm. I'm I'm happy to keep going if there are yeah, questions here. To, as there's I can, a couple more some useful ones. So if people we... want to stay on, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let's finish off a couple of these last questions then. Um, so one here, I'm seeing. Um, I have no experience in um, SQL or custom reports, but I have requirements to build some. Uh, yeah. I have access to our DB team. Would you say that it's easy enough for a DBA to build one of these custom reports? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, it's one of those things where you're bringing knowledge together. You're bringing the Orion administrator knowledge and saying, this is the report that I want to see. And then you're going, well, I don't have the skills to custom code that. And I've identified that the GUI doesn't allow me natively to, to build that report. Absolutely. Get someone with that skill set involved. So Obviously, from our point of view, when we're working with customers, yeah, we'll, we'll go and create those custom reports for them. If you've got access to a, um, a developer or a DBA or anyone that's got SQL query knowledge, bring them in, give them visibility of the application, um, 
Um, there uh, can be kind of guidances on the schema, so how they can get that data out of Orion in a query form. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess kind of in line with, similar to the question we just kind of answered, but uh, somebody else says, this seems pretty complex. If I wanted uh, your help to do this for me, typically how long do these reports take to create? Um, uh, wh wh which piece of string are you holding yeah. up at the moment? I can't see. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I joke, but um, it varies. Some reports can take five, ten minutes. Some reports are going to take a couple of hours. Um, the design of the report, the creation of the report, the validation of the report is obviously a process to go through. Um, complex um, can be, yeah. So again, do you know what you want to report on? Are you collecting that data in the first place? So there may be a data gap actually missing here. And so in that scenario, clearly there's a bit more of a review, understanding about what the objectives are, how the solution then can deliver it, how the gaps can be filled in and the report generated. So sometimes really? it can be a little bit complex. Yeah, um, we're certainly here to help. Um, also actually, um, the THWAC website. Yeah, so the SolarWinds community website, THWAC. Um, so what I've got here is the content exchange, Orion platform reports. So this is users like yourself, our engineers, sharing reports. So from this point of view, I could look at this and I could say, um, uh, I want to do a, a report on group availability. So I want to have a look. Um, I look at the report and I go, um, yep, that's exactly what I want as a foundation. OK, download it, run it. Yep this is working all oh, but actually I want to put my custom properties and I want to put um, my calculated field on here so um, ignore this black bit that's just the XML for the, in the file you literally just download the file you go to your managed reports area and you import that file and then it will add to this list and then you can obviously edit and enhance it as you need to I see there's one last question. Is that Donovan, is that right? Uh, yep, I've seen that one too. Um, so, yep, last question here. So it's safe to say that reports can be for remediation instead creating alerts, for example, showing CRC errors on network devices, um, as well as for management tools for capacity, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we, we did a very similar um, webinar on alerting, and in that, in the slide deck, very big stressed point that if you are generate or creating an alert definition, that somebody is going to go, oh, okay, that's useful information. That's not an alert. Yeah, that's 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 a report. That's something that somebody's going to take information and go, thank you very much. I'm going to use that information. If they're not going to go and action it, if they're not going to go and fix something, if they're not going to go and change something. That's not an alert. So certainly with regards to that question, it feeds very much into that. And absolutely, it can still, the reports are there to change. Yeah, that remediation, um, whether it's from a proactive viewpoint. Yeah, you're running. Um, so if I come in here, so let me do a search for forecast here. So here we've got a couple of reports. So this is the out of the box one. Our very, very small installation, over 100 rows, because network devices, server devices, volume, so, um, CPU, memory, disk, interface, all of that is being included. So what we've got here is a focused one just on disk capacity. When am I going to run out of disks? So this is my remediation report. Yeah, This is my, actually, if I carry on at my growth rate, the projection is I'm going to run out of space in around 40 odd days. So remediation action, go and review that volume. Can I cleanse it? Do I need to increase its size on the VM? Absolutely. So alerts are gonna be the, this has happened, somebody needs to go and do it now. Reports are gonna be similar, but you're gonna look at it from a bigger picture. You're gonna be taking more data points in, you're gonna be taking more um, uh, values, more um, uh, correlated and enriched information to allow you to make in intelligent decisions about change, improvements, future planning for tomorrow or three months time or a year's time. Thanks, Mark. I think I actually see one last one. Oh. 
Because we're we'll over, move. I'm going to continue, if that's okay, yep. Darren. Yeah, yeah, um, no, so fine with me. Last question here. My biggest pain is to oh. do with permissions around reports. So um, there's a couple of angles behind that. One of them, so if I go to my user account settings, one of them is around, uh, actually, let's not use one, but here, yeah, actually do function on. So if I edit this user, so one of the first things in terms of permissions is does the user have access to all of the devices? So maybe I'm creating a report for um, all of my servers, but I've got a, a user that's located in the US and they really only should be seeing US based devices. I don't want them giving visibility of um, uh, of devices around the world. So in that scenario, create an account or add them to a group where there is a limitation and you're saying this user can only see um, this device type, yep, servers. I can, I'm only showing them um, firewalls. I'm only showing them devices that are in the US. So that's the first consideration. When you apply a limitation at the account level, when that user logs in, their entire experience through the web UI of Orion is then only going to populate with those devices that you've allocated to them. That includes the reporting engine. So if I was to run the SLA reports as a user with only access to US located devices, that would be what would get populated in that report. The second scenario here with permissions is this section here. So you can provide limitations. So can they add, edit, and delete existing reports? Probably not. You want to keep that under tight control. But then report limitation. So here we've got um, uh, uh, an example of one of our customers that um, we've got um, a, um, a permission restriction in place. So when I'm then editing my report, and have I got any editing in play? Nope. So let's just go and edit this one. When I edit the report, you will see under the properties that I can now say, okay, this user is only going to see this report. And I edit another report and I add them to the category. So now I may be creating a, um, for that user account a restriction that they can only see 10 out of the 600 reports because that's all they need to see. Dare I say it, good for management. Yeah, management don't need to see 600 reports. We want to keep them focused on the pretty, pretty graphic reports, don't we? Okay. I think I've answered every question. Uh, apologies for overrunning, Darian, but I that's all right, Mark. No, I think so. Yeah, got got through all the questions. Um, I think it's good that we managed to get them covered off there. You know, um, only one over ten minutes, so yeah, no, no issue yeah. on my end. Yeah, and, and, and thank you for everyone that stayed on uh, for that. I say appreciate you joining and attending the webinar in the first place, but for staying on and um, and allowing us to answer everything, and hopefully you've got benefit from that. Cool. Thanks, Mark. So just going to just change this. So just to finish up, when I can get my screen sorted. Another poll question. Um, so just for those who are still here, if you wouldn't mind, if you, you know, wouldn't mind to give us another one or two minutes of your time, um, just to quickly, um, you know, um, answer the poll uh, when it pops up on your screen. Um, how are aligned as solo wind reports to your business needs? Uh, you've got four options up there. Um, not very aligned and not meeting needs, meeting basic requirements. You're happy with what solo wind reports are delivering, or uh, we know solo wind reports can be doing more for us. Um, yeah, like I said, it'd be really useful if you guys wouldn't mind just taking a minute or so to. Um, quickly pop an answer in there and then I think we should be right to finish up just after I think Mark yeah absolutely yeah I'll say thank you everyone for, for attending I do hope you found it useful go go get some reports built yeah so at the moment seeing it well, looks like we've seen the most at the moment is um, know that SoWin supports can be doing more for us um, which okay. is again that typically what <laughs> hearing and there, here, to be fair isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah Some people okay. vote for um, the basic requirements.
Okay, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. The, the two ones there, meeting basic requirements. Yeah. We know it can do more, of course. Um, it's the area that really can grow and really bring big benefit to, to a company. So, mm-hmm. reinforces everything we kind of knew about the people that would attend. Yeah, no, absolutely. Excellent. Well, cool. um, do you want to close up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, I think there might, let me just, uh, are we going to useful resources, I think, as well? Or yeah. we should be yeah. past that as well? Um, so, yeah, just some useful resources here for, for you guys on the call. Um, the uh, link to the um, the webinar we just done, uh, there's an insight here on uh, an introduction to Orion's devices configuration and compliance reporting. Um, and then there's a couple of other links on here as well, um, which will we be sending around with the recording after? I'm not sure, Mark. But um, uh, yeah, so the, the video is going to go up to the YouTube channel, so um, it'll be available. Cool. So yeah, everyone, thanks for your time today. Um, I hope you guys found it useful. If there's anything additionally question-wise that comes to mind after this, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, drop us a mail or call. We're happy to help with any other questions or um, if you need to have any discussions around the reporting and how we might be able to help you or what you could be doing to improve that. Again, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to have a chat and happy to help. But yeah, Mark, thank you for your time today and thanks for taking us through that demo. And no thank you everybody for your time today joining us and giving us an extra 13 minutes. So I hope everyone has a rest of a good day and we'll see you next time. Take care, Ron. Bye-bye now. Cool. Thank you. Bye-bye.